Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we're back with some amazing Dying Light 2 news that talks about the future upcoming content. In fact, all this information gives you an idea of what to expect in the future updates. So basically, after the delay of the upcoming story DLC 1, Techland did a Q&A with the community on Discord. During that Q&A, there were some amazing questions that talked about the stuff we always wanted in Dying Light 2. Things like legend levels, PvP, developer tools, new skill sets, and many many more important questions have been discussed here. So let's check them out, but before that, a word from our sponsor, Opera GX. Yes, this is not your regular Opera browser, it's actually a very special version of Opera that is made specifically for gamers, which is actually available on both mobile and PC. In fact, you can also connect your mobile version to your desktop version. Now personally, I've been using Opera GX for almost two years and I just love this browser for what it offers for its users. For example, like this GX control feature that is very useful for someone who likes to open multiple tabs in the background. I know we all usually do that while playing our favorite game, but having so many tabs open actually causes a lot of problem as it lags your game and being a gamer, that's not cool. So this GX control feature actually lets you limit the amount of CPU, RAM or network bandwidth that your browser uses. Seriously, you can adjust it however you want and see what's best for you. And after this, you don't have to compromise your FPS anymore. Then we have this GX corner for people who actually want to stay updated with all the best deals, free games, new releases and gaming news. Yes, GX corner basically displays everything in front of your screen so you can always stay up to date with everything gaming related. By the way, you can easily switch between different platforms here so that's not a problem. GX corner is definitely a very handy feature for us gamers. So what are you guys are waiting for? Download Opera GX from the link in the description and experience this gaming browser. Trust me, it's like no other browser you have used before. Now coming back to the video and let's look at the first question from the Q&A. Will a legend level be added to Dying Light 2? Well, Timon Smaktala, the lead game designer, replies to this question saying that's definitely the plan as we believe legend levels would be a great addition to the current chapter formula and the game overall. Whoa, so this means in the future updates we'll actually see the legend levels being implemented to the game and it will somehow be connected to the chapters we have in this game. Whatever the case is, it surely will be awesome to see legend levels added to this game. Next, are are there any plans to rework the safe houses of Fisheye Canteen? The Fisheye doesn't really serve much of a purpose after finishing the game. Demon says, I feel exactly the same and I would like to see both the Fisheye Canteen and the PK Missy populated with more people and story. These hubs would be a great place for the next chapter agents, additional activities or maybe some more Villador stories. In fact, there is a long list of quality of life improvements as a part of the 5 year post launch support plan. I'm sure we'll get back to these locations. Next, will guns be added to Dying Light 2? Demon says, we understand that this is one of the top three requests from our community and as we have stated many times that we want the Dying Light franchise development to follow our great players expectations. There's nothing more I can say at this point but I don't want to jump the gun, pun intended. Lol, that is crazy because the way Timon said it, it's quite possible that we might get guns in the future as they listen to what the community wants. I just hope they make more hybrid guns like the Scorpio from E3 2019 demo. Next, will Dying Light 2 get a PvP mode? Will it somehow be related to Bloody Ties DLC? Timon says Bloody Ties will support single player and online co-op modes. However, we believe that we can offer so much more with the arena format. It all depends on how you guys will respond to it. I can imagine more and more events and modes being added to the Carnage Hall at the later date. So I'm thinking that the Bloody Tars DLC can be a really good place for human versus human combat in the future DLC. Honestly, I just hope they come up with something like be the zombie game mode for the future Dying Light 2 update. Next, will we get developer tools to let the community shape their game as they like? Oh my god, thank you so much for asking this question. Honestly, if Techland releases the developer tools, the community will make the whole Elysium map in less than 3 months. So this is why developer tools is so awesome. It helps us create custom maps and Dying Light 1 had some amazing maps for show. Now look at what Timon said about this. We are actively working on adding developer tools to the PC version of the game as well as looking for the ways to deliver the mods on PC to console players. I think that Dying Light 1 is a great reference to what is possible but again I don't want to say anything too early but when we are ready you will hear about it. Holy shit this is amazing. He kind of indirectly confirmed that we will be getting developer tools very soon and just imagine when that happens playing all the custom maps made on PC on your console. That sure is an amazing news. Next, 
Next, will you add X-ray vision when hit enemy in Dying Light 2? Timon says we already have it working in the game and we will introduce it with the Bloody Ties DLC or right after it. Wow, so another confirmation that we'll be getting this X-ray vision with the release of Bloody Ties DLC. Next, is there going to be an updated roadmap for the new content after Bloody Ties? Timon says we have a lot of plans regarding the short, mid and long term future of Dying Light to stay human, but we want to be flexible and follow the community's voice. You will learn more about the plans after the release of Bloody Ties DLC. Next, will there be coming new skills to Dying Light 2 in future? Timon says the skill tree is already packed, so perhaps not in the way of adding new skills to it, but characters' abilities will be developed in progress with the upcoming updates. Next question. Will you please reduce the time for the VNC tower elevator to work? Lol, this is a gold question. I honestly hate the waiting time in the VNC tower elevator. And well, Timon replied to this question saying that an interesting one and I don't have an on the spot answer. So let me note it down and investigate. Well, Timon, I really hope you guys can fix this elevator thing. It's very annoying waiting this long to just get on the rooftop. Next, will the DLC add any new Easter egg weapons like in Dying Light 1? Timon said yes, I hope you'll find them all. Next, can you add stats to the game like how many kills and stuff you have overall. Demon said it's on the list of one of the strong candidates for the community update too. So yeah, expect a stats menu in the next community update. Next, will we ever see a PvP combat in Dying Light 2 or attack game mode? Timon says priority number one after the release of Bloody Ties is strengthening the online aspects of the game. I don't want to say anything too early, but please be sure that we'll be focusing a lot on what's happening with the interactions between player in the future. Now that reply was really interesting. Next, is there ever going to be a cross platform? Demon said it's a very complex technical challenge and we will not say anything concrete about the cross platforms plans until we are sure that we can deliver them. So guys, no good news yet for the people who want cross platform. Next, will a finisher mechanic return to the game? If so, a grab mechanic similar to Dishonored would centerize well with that feature? Well, Timon replied to this question saying, as you have probably noticed, we are adding and improving animations throughout the game. One example of it will be the amazing katana animation created by our animator, Markin. So we plan to continue this trend. So further the improvements such as one you have mentioned can definitely happen. So yeah, maybe in the future we can see some new takedowns and new finisher animations. So it's a good news because honestly, the katana was probably the best part of the update. Next question. Why do you guys give us a release date when you aren't 100% sure it's going to be ready by then? That's a really good question and let's see what Timon said about this. Thanks for a great question. I would like to take the opportunity to address this. Since the release of Dying Light to Stay Human, the team has been working hard to provide our players with fixes, features and updates. And we will continue to do this with based on your feedback. Making games is a complex process and sometimes unexpected development issues can arise and impact our release schedule. It's a tough decision to make when we have to postpone the release of content. However, I firmly believe in this case, it was the right call to make. We appreciate the support of the community on the decision and we all are looking forward to the comments and feedback when Bloody Ties releases in just few weeks time. Next, will you add more color filters to the game? To which Timon said the system is flexible enough to allow that and we already have some cool ideas. Let us know if you have any visual filters you would like to see in the game. And by the way, I must say, I personally and the whole team, we are amazed by the quality of art created by our community using the photo mode. I mean, yep, the photo mode is cool. And honestly, I would love to see more filters and more options added to the photo mode itself. Like imagine changing the weather and time in photo mode. That show will be cool. Next question is about Bloody Ties DLC. Someone asked if it's going to be a big arena and a difficult to defeat. To which Timon replied saying, as a location, the Carnage Hall is a rather big place. There's main buildings and arenas inside a nice park around it, which holds some of the DLC additional side quests. The arena themselves are big enough to allow us to combine parkour traversal and combat with the huge amounts of infected in the events that occur over the course of the DLC. As for the difficulty, we'll still balancing the DLC and we hope to make it easy enough for everyone to experience the full story of Aiden and his friend Cairo. But honestly, to undercover everything the Carnage Hall has to offer, players will have to really stand up for a bigger challenge. The next question is also related to bloody ties. Someone asked when we will see more creative outfits for the characters. To which Timon replied saying bloody ties has this great story about the family but it also touches on the topic of fame and vanity. That's why it also introduces a few dozen outfits and cosmetic items to the game. I hope that you will find them at least some of them creative. Now the final question asked was when we will get the quest for dying light 2 in the techland gg website. Timon said we are working on it and planning to add quest for the dying light 2 to the techland gg website but there are no dates yet to be shared. And guys, that was it. During the Q&A, Timon confirmed many new things for the future update and also shed some lights on the few of the community requests. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. Also, download Opera GX from the link in the description if you are a true gamer because this browser won't disappoint you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, stay safe and stay human.